It's Friday, April 18th, let's talk PlayStation. So I want to immediately get into the title of this video and the thumbnail choice because, you know, certainly an interesting story if you haven't heard about it already. Basically, Titanfall could have possibly been on PlayStation Vita. Originally, uh, when Respawn was making the game back in 2012, they approached Sony and said, like, you know, can we see some specs for your next generation system? We want to know what we're working with because we've got Microsoft's numbers and we're, you know, we're working on the game, right? And of course, we've talked about this before. Titanfall was certainly destined to be on multiple platforms, including PlayStation 4 until that exclusivity deal um, and case in point Sony Sony said uh, you know we're not ready to divulge details we don't want to tell you about the specs just yet because the specs for the ps4 were not finalized just yet because they were still building you know the hardware in fact back then back in 2012 I think the ps4 was going to have four gigabytes of RAM until more developers kept saying we want eight gigabytes of unified memory um, point being Sony didn't give uh, respawn any details but Sony did say um, you know, we could help you get the game on PlayStation Vita if you want to do that. And that is really, really interesting because more or less the game could have actually ended up being on PlayStation Vita. Now back then the game actually wasn't called Titanfall just yet. It was in its very early stages. In fact, the uh, code name for the game was called R1 and it went through many design changes until it actually became Titanfall. Um, but more or less Sony said like, not PS4 because we're not talking about it just yet, but you can put it on Vita and Sony offered help to put it on Vita which would, you know, I would assume they would give them dev kits, they would give them some funding. Uh, Sony does that currently. So, you know, it kind of bums me out, actually, that Respawn didn't kind of jump at that offer uh, because that was still so early on before all this, you know, EA stuff and Microsoft signing and publishing and the exclusivity deal and all that. Who knows how it would have actually went down, but I, I find it surprising that Respawn didn't at least jump on that chance, but instead they already had Microsoft's numbers so that, you know, again, that you, we know how history played out. It's just like, you know, in hindsight, when you look at this, it's like, man, Titanfall on PS Vita would have been, would have been pretty dope. Uh, you know, it's also worth mentioning though, you know, Respawn's a small team, so that's probably why they didn't even accept the help and funding from Sony. Uh, again, who knows really where they were at at that stage, so. But speaking of Titanfall, um, the March numbers for NPD came out. Now, normally I don't want to talk, I don't really cover NPD numbers, and I don't want to get too involved in, like, console wars and all that, but this is really interesting because, like, um, basically the March numbers are out for the US and the PlayStation 4 outsold the Xbox One in America. It's, a, it's surprising of course because Titanfall came out during that time frame and everyone assumed you know Xbox One was going to clearly outsell the PS4 for that month because it was moving hardware units plus Microsoft was doing a lot of promotions with the X1 and Titanfall and they were doing you know the, they were selling bundles that weren't even 500 bucks. They were doing 450 price cuts with all sorts of retailers and it's just really surprising that uh, although Titanfall was the best selling game of that month that Sony still came up on top in terms of hardware. In all honesty, it probably highlights, you know, what Microsoft needs to fix and how they really need to get, in, get into gear, but uh, very surprising. I did not expect that at, at all. I thought for sure uh, Xbox One was going to outsell PS4 for March in the US, but wow, <laughs> Sony's doing pretty damn well. And number two, uh, the second game, second best selling game of that month was Infamous Second Son, so, uh, you know, no surprises there. Um, moving on, it was a big news story this week that Sony sold all of its shares in Square Enix. So Sony had a pretty sizable investment in Square Enix and they are selling, selling, selling and getting out of that. And they're making a pretty big profit, a lot of money from the sale. They're selling, again, all of their shares and they're making about, about a hundred, uh, fifth, yeah, 15 billion yen. And they're making about 153 million US dollars from that. Good, good chunk of change. Makes sense. Sony's a you know not in the best financial situation. Why hold this you know those shares if you don't need them? Uh, they certainly weren't doing Sony any good anyway. Usually when you have a big investment in a company and you're a big shareholder, you know those two companies operate together and work with each other and you know off you know if they're kind of in the same line of business, they'll offer um, help with one another. Uh, they, of course, this is the games industry, so you know the past few years of what Screenix has been doing, which is hardly any exclusive games on PlayStation platforms, uh, going completely multi-platform with all their major, you know, games. Uh, like I said, there's no real benefit for Sony having all those shares and being a shareholder, so they got out and made a lot of money. So, good for them, I guess. So Sony is finally detailing PS4 firmware 1.7. We should be expecting it at the end of this month. In fact, on the PlayStation blog, they uh, originally listed it as April 30th that we'll see this uh, firmware come out, but then they actually edited it out, probably because that's like kind of internally with the date that they're targeting, but they're not sure yet, so that's why they edited it out. But uh, it said April 30th. You can expect the Share Factory app, which will allow you to trim and uh, edit your clips, turning off HDCP, allowing to export all your clips onto a USB drive, and then, you know, do whatever you want with them 
uh, which is really cool. Now there's a couple of interesting tidbits about this. One thing being that if you watch the Share Factory video that they posted on their YouTube channel, you can see a little bit of footage showing how you can actually use your own original music in it, which I would assume means that they could read it from a USB drive and you could select your own mu music from there. Um, something along those lines. What is, it's adding more evidence to this at least, is that on NeoGAF, one user named Tdix, uh, who has, uh, he's an industry insider, he's been right before, but keep in mind with all industry insiders, pick your battles with them in terms of what you want to believe or disbelieve, but he has been right before, so that's why I'm mentioning him now. Um, he kind of hinted at the fact that MP3 playback is coming back, is coming very soon. I don't know if that means it's coming in 1.7 or a firmware update after that, but more or less he's saying like it's coming soon, which, you know, we knew it was coming, we knew it was coming soon, so no big surprises there. He also, uh, you know, kind of teased us a little bit about PSN name changes, and he said, uh, yeah, it's basically coming, but let us know, he kind of let us know that it's not in, it's not in 1.7, so that one for sure is definitely in the later firmware update. Again, full disclosure, this is from an industry insider on NeoGAF, so come, come up with your own judgment on whether or not you want to believe what he or she says. Uh, most of these insiders uh, certainly are right at times, that's why you know they get posted on the internet and people talk about them. But they've been wrong before, so again, come up with your own judgment about whether or not you want to believe them. So remember last week when we talked about The Last of Us on PS4? Well, it actually turns out that Naughty Dog actually is looking into an upgrade program for people that bought the game on PS3 which is really, really awesome because I didn't actually expect that to happen. Um, I think it's very safe to say that for sure they looked into it, but the fact that they're being public about saying that they're looking into it means that it's very likely that it, will, it, would, it would happen. Uh, that's at least how I see it. Um, so hopefully they actually do come up with something because like, that's really cool. Clearly, if you look at threads, comments, anywhere on the internet, people totally want to buy this even at 60 bucks. So it's cool that they would offer you a uh, upgrade price. And it also looks like the game might be coming out June 20th if some retailers are to be believed because a lot of retailers are uh, listing that same date. Um, some still have a placeholder date, but most of them are, are saying June 20th. So they might know what time it's coming. You know, could, that could very easily be the date. So I don't know, keep an eye out for it. And to end off this show, let's talk a little bit about Minecraft. Um, the PS3 version of the game is getting a Blu-ray release May 16th, so you can get an actual physical copy of the game May 16th. Um, but I know a lot of people want to know where the PS4 and Vita versions of the game are. I get asked a few times where it is. Um, the only update I can give you is that 4J teases it a lot on their Twitter account, and they actually posted a little picture showing the Vita version and the PS4 version in the background, at least what... You know, I would assume that's the PS4 version, and there's an X1 controller there too to kind of tease the X1 version. Uh, they keep saying it's coming, so it's coming. That's the only update I can give you. Trust me, I want it too. I, I really want that Vita version, man. That game is perfect for Vita. Anyway, those are just some of the news stories I want to talk about with you guys this week. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Benecki. Thank you so much for talking with me, and I'll see you all next Friday.